Hello everyone. We're going to be talking today about illuminated manuscript during the Gothic period. Now up to this point, especially talking about the Gothic cathedrals, uh, we've used the word Gothic to mean an identifiable kind of style with elements that you can uh, pick out quite easily. And you could say this is a Gothic church. Uh, illuminated manuscript doesn't work so much that way. Uh, and so I'm using the word Gothic here to mean not so much an identifiable style, but a period of time. So think of it as the late medieval period, you know, before the Renaissance. We see a lot of different influences on uh, illuminated manuscript during this period. So you have obviously the, the strongest influence probably coming from Constantinople, from the Byzantine Empire, and Byzantine art. So things like icons. A great deal of the illumination during that period then resembles icons. It's very flat, it's symbolic, uh, but we also have uh, influences from the Greek and Roman, ancient Greek and Roman, which people are aware of. It's not a, as strong an influence now as the Byzantine, uh, but it is there. And then we also have the influence of all this tremendous barbarian art that we've looked at, that we're familiar with. So this love of detail and love of color and a kind of whimsical approach with animals that turn into fantasy shapes and interweaving and things like that. And so you see these mixed up in different ways, all kinds of different ways during the uh, Gothic period, at least at the beginning. Uh, so this is what we start with during the Gothic period. As time progresses, just like with Gothic sculpture, we begin to see increased naturalism. So more attention to things like uh, creating a sense of form and space, uh, more believable anatomy, more believable uh, details, uh, you know, things that are, have been studied and drawn in a way that is naturalistic, that looks real. And so this is uh, an approach that I think is influenced more by uh, Greek and Roman art, or at least by the same drive that was behind the Greek and Roman art, this observation of nature. And so we see increased naturalism through the Gothic period in increments, and this is really where uh, the art of painting is pushed most, uh, most noticeably, is in the art of illumination. Uh, and then later on we'll look at Gothic painting, and how it follows right behind uh, illumination and takes up a lot of these same uh, kind of stylistic concerns. As we move through, you'll begin to see a change in the way the artists treat the surface of the page. And that has to do with what's called the picture plane. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So you look at these two examples. The first is an example of the picture plane as a flat surface that's decorated, as you often see it, you know, I've used sort of a little decorative border there to give the effect. And then whatever object the artist was interested in portraying sat on the surface of the page and projected out from it. So if you saw a picture of a saint or of uh, Christ triumphant on his throne, uh, then that would be sitting on the surface of the page and projecting out a little bit like it was sitting on top of the page. The new approach to the surface of the page, what they call the picture plane, is to treat it like a window, like a clear, transparent surface that we pass through. The picture plane becomes transparent and invites you into another world. So as the artist's relationship with the picture plane changes, that pushes them farther into wanting to investigate nature and how it really appears to our eyes. So they begin to uh, look into perspective. They don't really get it right, but they are working at it. They're trying to create a believable space for you to enter into. And this becomes really important. They begin to multiply detail, uh, not the kind of decorative detail that they had like in the Book of Kells, there was tons of detail in the Book of Kells, but this is a different kind of detail. It's natural detail or realistic detail, uh, the way the world appears to us, right? You know, so details of anatomy, details of uh, clothing, of, of nature, plants and buildings and all kinds of things and how they really appear. And so they begin to multiply this and you see it uh, 
in many, many different forms. And then finally, toward the end of the Gothic, we have developed what they call the international Gothic style. And you see all these things coming together. It's really showcased best in the work of the Limburg brothers, particularly uh, their Book of Hours that they created. This art is really pushing toward the ultimate realism. They're more like full-size paintings, uh, except in miniature. So you have great levels of detail of all different kinds. You still have this kind of playfulness that you saw in medieval art and in a lot of the different illuminations. And so as painters begin to be influenced by these manuscripts, their work begins to change right along with it. And it's all driven by this interest in the observation of nature and then translating that into a visual language.